Hi there, I'm Bonnie McCaffrey, and thank you so much for coming back this month for another vidcast. This month, I'm here with Melinda Bula. She does the most spectacular floral quilts, and you're going to love seeing these. She does have a book out. It's called Cutting Garden Quilts. And so let's take a look at some of her quilts. Tell me about this one here. It's just stunning. It is called Romance. And when I was making this quilt, I love the Renaissance masters. And I love to make quilts that look like those type of old world um, bouquets. Now, my mom was an interior designer, and she would make big bouquets like this when wow. uh, I was in like my teenage years. And they would pass through our house for a little bit. And I would go and get my paints or my sketch pencils, and I would sketch those bouquets mm -hmm. as they went through. So when I started doing this, I thought, well, the first thing I want to do is see if I can make a bouquet like, yeah. like um, yeah. my mom had made. And I'm obsessed with doing this. And this quilt was quite challenging because I was trying to make water drops on the table without using any paint. Now, my quilts are all fusible fabric. I'm trying to paint a painting without using any paint. There's nothing wrong with using paint, right, but I just right. kind of kept myself in this little box to see if I could do it and find all the fabric in the quilt store. And you, and did you can. It. You did it. Yes. Wow. And so I was really close to getting out a marking pen here on the raindrops, but no, I cut every little bit there wow. uh, with fabric and then highlighted with thread. Yeah. And what inspired you to put the snail on there? He's his name is Snitchy because in Snitchy. like the Dutch masters, they would always have some like dead fish or bugs or there'd be a beetle in those if you look at those old paintings. I'm so glad that Snitchy's not dead. No, Snitchy is not dead. He's alive. He is alive. <laughs> He's alive. He's so alive I put, and well. I put him in. Now the next quilt, I um, did a little small quilt here. This is a picture that I took in my mother's garden. Wow. And she has these beautiful yellow irises. And I love irises. And so I really wanted to see if I could make... I've never made an iris before. So I played around with making this um, quilt. And then I, I wrote an article for American Quilter magazine on making this. And then I've had so many people call me and ask me, are you going to make that into a pattern? So I'm working right now and making it at a pa in a pattern. Perfect. And it just looks so real. Yes. And you and don't... You're, I'm, you're I'm trying gonna, to... You're going to tell us the <laughs> trick on how to make them look real. Yes, I will. Well, but I'm trying to right now, I'm making them in different colors because you need a lot of, you know, different colors. Of course. Now, this is a, a blue bonnet um, at International Quilt Festival last year. They were having a Texas celebration. So I decided I was going to make a blue bonnet for the Texas celebration. And in California, it's called a lupin. The only place it's called a blue bonnet is in Texas. Interesting. So when I teach it in California, it's the lupin. When I teach it up in Alaska, <laughs> it's the Arctic lupin. And we I just keep see. it. But when we come to Texas, it's a blue bonnet. It's a blue bonnet. Now, what I saw when I was studying this, and I did visit, um, I taught a retreat in um, Texas, and the blue bonnets were blooming, and it was amazing. But there were this red flower Ooh. on the hillside called the Indian paintbrush. So right wow. before I came to festival this year, I quickly drew out an Indian paintbrush and quickly made it and then made the blue bonnet and thought, wouldn't this be beautiful if you put the Indian paintbrush in with the blue bonnet? It's so spectacular in real life, and it's, it's spectacular it's in a quilt. Yeah. But this is a pattern is. for my students and a class. Perfect. Then this is another oh class. Gosh, Let's gorgeous. turn this this way. This is my Zinnia quilt, and this Zinnia quilt is fun to make. It has the shadows. The thing that makes it look real is the darks and the light, the contrast. You need right. value in your colors to make this look real. Yeah. So this is a great class for learning value because that's what I'm doing. I'm painting a painting and I'm approaching it just like an artist deals with color. Right, but cutting for, it from fabric. But cutting it from instead fabric of instead of paint brushing it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Stunning. And then I decided to make um, another quilt with three zinnias Aww. in my hand dyed fabric because I, I was dyeing fabric for my students, but I didn't know if it would really work. Oh, thank so heavens, I it have did. To, yeah, so I did all of the colors and played around with it, yeah. and it's been quite fun to do. Yeah. Now this, this is, is my, this is called Splendor in the Grass, and this quilt won Best of Show in Chicago. Perfect. <laughs> now, we're gonna peek under here. Oh, my American flag. But this, we're not gonna hear about this okay. until the end. Okay, We're Got gonna it. keep that, you, stay tuned, you'll, see, you'll hear the story about that quilt. But we are going to set up so that you can see how Melinda does her design process and how she does her quilts. So we'll be right back. 
All right, so you're going to tell us the secret of how you make your quilts. So how do you start? Well, I look for a photograph, a realistic photograph of a real flower. And I'm usually inspired by the color. Mm -hmm. And so I find the photograph and then I will enlarge it onto a 8 by 10 sheet of regular copy paper, not photo paper, regular copy paper. And then I take a fine tip Sharpie marker and I will draw around all the shapes on a piece, either on the copy or I'll put a piece of tracing paper over. Right, okay. And then and I like sheer translucent tracing paper so you can see through. And then I'll draw all the shapes, the basic shapes of my flower on the tracing paper. Then I go back and every time I'll start to dissect the little tiny color that I see. Every time I see the color change in a petal, I will circle it, outline, oh outline that color. And so you have to look intensely. That's what artists do. We look right. intensely at, at detail and stare a lot to get intimate with our picture. So you're saying that every time you see like a different color, yes. you're, you're, you make I, a pattern piece. I do, exactly. Okay. And then the key is I'll take that uh, tracing to a blueprint place or, or scan it in my computer, I want to enlarge it to the right. si finished size. Right. And so I'll scan in that black and white um, tracing. In my computer, it comes out in a lot of little pieces of paper. Right. And, tape them all and we tape them all together. Yeah. But you can go to a blueprint place and have it enlarged. I want it 300% and they'll, yeah. they'll enlarge it for you. Now, the key to making this work and getting the depth in all the flowers is focusing on the lightest colors that you see and the darkest colors that you see and identifying all the colors in those shapes that you outlined. And I was seeing my students um, not being able to see all the color correctly, that I had to work to train their eyes so that they could see colors. So I invented this little tool called the Color Finder. Mm -hmm. and. Really, you, you use the, um, the white side. Okay. And you use this little hole. hole. And when the hole is surrounded by white, if we enlarge, let's say, this petal right here, I see, just off the top of my head, three colors. Now, my student will look at it and say, maybe they see two colors. But if I can show them that this is one color by isolating it in white, this center color is another color, and this right here is a lighter color. Now, what I do is, I put this over that color and then I run this over my stash and when that oh. color and this color So you're taking a piece of fabric. I'm taking a piece of fabric. Let's just put that, like that just put it under there. And so. I will run it past and when those two colors, when that color and this color match, got it. That's the color I make for that perfect for that. What a because handy tool. It is a handy tool. And yeah. I try to get as close as I possibly can to know what it is before I tweak it. Because a lot of times I intensify the color yeah. just because yeah. I like to. <laughs> so then you're doing Steam -a Seam? I use Steam -a Seam 2. Um, it has, it's sticky on both sides. It turns my fabric, because of the stickiness, into paint. Because, Interesting concept. Because it sticks to my canvas, which is my background fabric. Well, yes, it does, doesn't so it? So I look the whole time. I have an art background and I painted, but now when I want to paint, I do this. Got it. So, Perfect. And I layer. Yeah. I layer the color on top. So the, the steam -a seam and the sticky allows me to layer color on top of color and sew through it. Now, if somebody doesn't want to go through the process of tracing the pattern, you happen to have done that for yes. them occasionally? I love to take some of my quilts and turn them into patterns. And I found that my, my challenge is I want every student to be successful. Every student needs to have a beautiful flower. I but agree. they couldn't all get it until I decided to make a color chart. Now this has turned this pattern into a paint by numbers. So you can take this to the fabric store and just get close to these colors. Yeah. And bazinga, Perfect. you have a beautiful flower. Perfect. <laughs> and if they want to learn more about doing your process and go into more detail, you have your great book. Yes, and my book has uh, five patterns in it. It has a beautiful gallery section that shows some of my uh, quilts. And then it shows the steps for making your own pattern. It's Perfect. also in that. Perfect. That's great. Excellent. Okay, so now let's get the flag quilt out and find out more about that one. 
Thank now, you. as promised, you're going to tell us about this quilt here. Yes, this is called, and our flag was still there, and it was made in honor of my son, Matthew, who is a United States Marine. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> and I made it when I was going through accepting that my, uh, my only child wanted to be a Marine. Mm. I can't imagine. Yeah, and two days after he graduated from college, he joined the Marines. So that yeah. was kind of weird. I knew he was going to be doing it. Yeah. But he'd also been studying Arabic and wanted to be a linguist. Aww. So I knew he has that gift and talent, and he had that passion to do this. So yeah. I made to accept, for Mommy to accept that her only child was going to be, you know, a hero. I decided to do something patriotic for myself to work out my feelings. And so I searched and searched for some kind of picture that ex expressed, you know, my proudness of my son, uh, and I, I looked at marine stuff, I looked at eagles, and then I found this old postcard of an antique picture, I guess, and I had to make this quilt. I had to make this quilt for me. I didn't want, I didn't care if anybody ever saw it, but it was just something that I needed to make yeah. to work out my feelings of my son yeah. going maybe overseas so yeah. I made it and I've been very proud of it but I had no idea what an impact this quilt would make when I showed it to guilds the tears the stories and then I realized that you know here I am selfishly just making it for me and my feelings but it is bringing out more feelings of all the other moms and dads and brothers and sisters that are out there who are going through the same thing I am. So I dedicate this quilt to all of them and to my uncle who was a Vietnam vet and when he came home people screamed at him and spit on him. Yeah. So this is in honor of all cool. of our patriots who've served in all the branches. And yes, it was on the cover of American Quilting Magazine. I was so proud to be on the cover. It won first place at their AQS Grand Rapids show. Cool. So cool. that's kind of cool. <laughs> well, I'd like to ask you a little question. Yes. What's your philosophy of life? My philosophy of life, that's very interesting. I like to, well, I believe in always encouraging others, um, caring about the, your fellow man. Um, I like to always help out wherever I can. And I believe that, that uh, God is looking over us and that we need to always remember that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And thank you so much You're for welcome. doing this with me. Oh, it's my pleasure. And thank you all. I hope you'll come back next month to see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me.